Hello, how's it going guys? Thank you for watching for this video. I'm gonna show you guys how I went from 260,000 in debt to about 330,000 in about seven years. All right, so before I get started, let me just mention a few things. Uh, this is not a video on how to invest your money. This is just me and what I did and also some of the luck that let me not just get debt free, but also get to about 330,000 net worth. All right, so the numbers that I'll be using are from my mint.com account. I've been using this since 2009, so I can start logging all the money, where the money was coming from, where the money was going. I love that website because it helps me track everything very easily and also doing taxes. It helps me a lot to be able to separate all the personal and all the business expenses. It's really helpful. I recommend you use it if you having trouble keeping a budget or just tracking all your money one thing about these numbers is that it's basically a screenshot of the beginning of the month and so really depending on how much credit card debt we have or if we were able to put the checks in the accounts uh, before that screenshot got taken uh, these numbers kind of jump so I won't be able to explain every single jump because it's just too much information so I'm just gonna do a general review of the year and so you can see how much assets and how much debt I have so we get the uh, total net worth. All right, so it all pretty much happened back in uh, 2012. In the beginning of the year, I had stopped going to school so I can work. I was working for the Marines at the time. I was living in Honolulu with my wife and my six month old daughter, who's now um, eight years old, crazy. My wife wasn't working at the time because my family's in LA, her family's in Japan. And so we didn't really have anybody to help us out with uh, our daughter. So she couldn't really work. Uh, I was working for the Marines for about $22 an hour. So things were a little bit tight, but because I was working on improving my credit score, I made sure everything was being paid. I wasn't taking out too many loans. The only thing I was really investing in at that time was my 401k through the military, which I only really started taking it seriously back in 2009. I had like $1,500 back in 2009. And by this time, I probably had about 10,000 if that. We had about $2,000 in my wife's IRA that she had from her previous employer, which she had to leave because of the pregnancy. And then I had started a college fund uh, for my daughter, which she was six months old, so it must have been about 600 bucks. So it wasn't a lot of money. Uh, you can see right here that in uh, January 2012, we had about 22,000. That's including those three things I just mentioned and whatever cash we had in the accounts. So because we had decided to stay in Hawaii, we started looking at buying a home uh, my credit was really bad back in 2005, 2006. So it took us a while just to improve it. Uh, my wife didn't have any credit because she had just gotten her uh, green card. My credit was getting better. So we decided to start uh, looking at the pre-approval process. And then we started looking at VA loans, uh, talked to a loan officer, a real estate agent. And somewhere in March, we got pre-approved for about 300,000, which sounds like a lot if you're in the mainland, but in Hawaii, 300,000 really doesn't get you a lot. Uh, keep in mind that I was the only one working and I was making $22 an hour, maybe $400 a month from the military. And that was pretty much the only income that was coming in. Right around this time in April, I started training for a photography company, which is uh, one of the uh, photography companies I shoot for today, but they weren't paying me. I was just training on the weekends and then working the Marine job during the weekdays. In May, we closed on our first home. We paid about 280,000. So that left us about 20,000 that we can use to uh, fix it. Uh, we spent right around 20,000. I gutted the entire kitchen, uh, all new kitchen, appliances and everything because it was really old and really ugly and sticky. So that's the one thing that we didn't like about the house when we first saw it. Uh, and then for the rest of it, we just painted. We just try to keep that, that uh, budget as tight as possible. I had to do all the work myself. I was on YouTube all day, working the Marine job in the day, uh, working the house at night. And on the weekends, I would go out and shoot without getting paid. So it was a little tough, a little stressful. It's probably the most stressful I've ever been uh, in my life, pretty much, including combat, which tells you a lot. So in July, we moved in. We had to move in because we had to leave the, our, our rented place in Honolulu. The kitchen wasn't even done yet. I had some friends that were gonna help me out, but they were too busy. So anyways, that was a little bit stressful too, just because we had a six month old. So there was a lot of construction equipment and it was kind of kind of scary a little bit but thankfully everything worked out and we started paying about nineteen hundred dollars for mortgage and the maintenance fees uh, which is uh, not too bad for being in Hawaii so nothing much happened after that in 2012 other than in October I started actually getting paid to go and shoot the weddings and it was still just on the weekends so sometimes Saturdays and Sundays I would go get a wedding and shoot maybe like really short easy ones all right so 2013 things got a little bit complicated because I had gotten a new position with the Marines 
which is paying about 75,000 a year. It was really good. I was bringing in a decent amount a month, especially compared to the previous position. But the problem is that that position required a clearance. And even though my clearance was in being processed, it was taking too long just because I'm I was born outside of the US, my wife's from outside the US, all my relatives are from outside of the US, so it just took a little longer than normal. So they gave me the opportunity to work from home while the clearance was being finalized, uh, but they only gave me about 45 days and they said after that, if, we, if your clearance isn't finished, we're gonna have to like find somebody else. Because the job that uh, I, I was doing, I can do within a couple of hours and I can work at night because I was doing it from home. So I started actually shooting weddings during the day and I started doing the work for the Marines at night. But the closer I got to the end of those 45 days, the more nervous I got. And unfortunately I didn't get my clearance in time. So I had to give up my position. And within a month of that happening, my clearance came in. And so, you know, it's all about timing. But because I lost that Marine job, I actually started doing photography full time from Monday to Sunday and I was just shooting all the time. I think I have the uh, most weddings during this year, October 2013, when I had 52 weddings in one month, which is insane. So that was the most weddings I ever did in a month and never again. So even though I was self-employed now, I wasn't getting the checks as fast. It wasn't every two weeks like the Marine job, it was every month. And so I had to kind of dip into the savings a little bit, uh, some of the cash that we had in the savings account. So thankfully it didn't run out before the checks started coming in. And on top of that, right around that time where I got that first check from photography, I started getting the last checks from the Marines. So that month pretty much covered for the next few months, which was good. It kind of took some pressure off. So in July of 2013, we refinanced the house. I wasn't hundred percent sure back then if that was the right move because it seemed kind of too soon after we closed. Uh, to be honest, I don't even know if it was the right decision now, but uh, it did bring our mortgage down to about 1600 a month. So that allowed us to save somewhere around 300 a month. All right, so moving on to 2014, my second daughter was born in January and because I kind of had to stay home to help and uh, that got kind of scary. I did have about $10,000 in a mutual fund that I started when I came back from deployment just so I wouldn't spend that money. Unfortunately, when my daughter was born, since my wife wasn't working and I had to stay home to help her out. I was self-employed already, so I couldn't really take any uh, paternal leave or anything like that. So I had to dip into that. And so that was gone within a couple months. But by that time I had discovered that the Marine Corps base had a daycare that I qualified for and it was half the price of uh, going outside of the base. And so because we knew that already, when our youngest turned six weeks, uh, we started putting both of them in daycare and my wife was able to start training in April of 2014 to shoot photos. And because she can go from Monday to Friday while my daughters were in daycare, uh, she didn't have to train as long as I did. And by June of that year, she was started shooting and getting paid for it. So by June 2014, we were bringing in uh, two incomes for the first time in a while. In 2014, my army career had got a little bit busy. I went to Korea to train some soldiers and that was about a month. And when I came back, I did about three months of active duty. And then I, after those three months, I actually went back to the Marine job part-time. And so while I was shooting during the day, anytime that I didn't have shoots or when my boss wanted some work done on the computer, then I would do it at night after I got home, after I finished editing. And so now I was getting good money from the army that year. Uh, my wife was working, I was shooting weddings, and then I also had a part-time job. 2014 allowed us to start saving a little bit more. So by this time, I had already started a college fund for my youngest daughter. So now we had a uh, 401k, uh, IRA, and two college funds. And in 2015, nothing really interesting happened. So I just want to take a quick second to acknowledge how much uh, help the Army Reserve has been to me. So since I'm self-employed, I would have to pay health insurance on my own. And that in Hawaii is about $400 per person. So that would have been $1,600 a month, which I cannot afford. So I was able to use the Army Reserve system and it was only $220 a month for the whole family, which is a massive, massive help. Also daycare is about $800 average per kid. I got friends that pay $1,200 per kid because I was taking them to the military base. It was only 400. So I was basically paying two for one. Also, every time I went to uh, pick up my daughters, I would stop and get groceries at the commissary, which is cheaper than outside. And on top of all that, the 400 to $500 that I would get every month, it all went directly to my 401. But without that, uh, then I wouldn't really have a retirement account. 
All right, so 2016, that's when everything kind of started happening. In March, the idea of a mobile photo studio kind of went into my head. In April, I started investing in Acorns and Robinhood. So I started about $25 per week per app. So that was about $200 a month. And then in May, I pretty much used any cash that I had to buy the truck. I started using credit cards to get it ready. I spent nearly $35,000. So by the time we launched in August, my debt went from 265,000 to about 295,000. Around that same time, I did bump our Acorns and Robinhood to about $50 a week. So that was about $400 a month, which when I started investing, I never even thought I was gonna be able to invest that much. So the second half of 2016, I kind of slowed down on the wedding photography and I was trying to launch and get this uh, mobile studio working. So because I took that time off, I actually started losing money and I wasn't able to pay down the debt as fast as originally. And I was also not investing as much. But right around the beginning of 2017, I decided to just go back to weddings and then try to figure out the, a way to do the mobile studio without me having to lose money uh, by now shooting weddings. I did bump up the investing to about $75 a week per app. So that was $600 a month. Actually, I just realized that I haven't mentioned how much I was investing in the RIA and the college funds. My 401k, just my army paycheck would go straight to that. So that was between three to $400. I would get some of it because I wasn't allowed to put 100% of it into the account just because of the debt that you could build for like life insurance and all that stuff. My wife's IRA, I started with $100 a month. I did the same thing for the two college funds. So about $100 a month for most of the time. And then in 2016, when I started learning about about investing I started looking at the accounts and then I realized that my wife's account was a cash account which I have a video on that if you want to check it out I'll link it down below and so the entire time that I was investing in her account it wasn't building any money at all so by the time I figured it out and I changed it over I started putting 150 a month so since I did it with her then I started doing it with my daughters too so I was doing 150 for all three of them so that was 450 a month for those accounts the 400 that were going into my account and the 600 that were going into those two apps. And obviously the only reason I could do that is because my wife was working and I was working. All right, so in June 2017, I decided to stop using Acorns and I put it all into Robinhood. I guess I got a little too cocky and I was thinking I can choose all the right companies and I could start doing penny stocks and all that. And that didn't last long. So in August 2017, I started the YouTube channel, which motivated me to start traveling, to start downsizing and start focusing on spending money on travel and activities rather than material things. So as I was making videos and I was trying to learn more things and learn more about personal financing, minimalizing, saving money while traveling, all these things kind of motivated me to pay off all debt. And so in April of 2018, I stopped investing on all the accounts, including the IRA, the college funds, and even my 401k and I started focusing on paying down debt. But interestingly enough, in June, we decided to sell the house in Kaneohe because the original plan was to travel in 2019 to the mainland, buy an RV and drive around. And while we were doing that, we were gonna Airbnb the house uh, so we can make more money from Airbnb rather than just rent it for the month. But then we started hearing rumors that there was gonna be a law that it was gonna make Airbnb illegal outside of Waikiki, Koalina, and whoever had a permit already from back in the 80s. And so we decided to start looking at options in Waikiki, if there was something that we can afford maybe, so we can buy in Waikiki and then sell the one in Kaneohe. And next thing you know, we found this condo, which looked like a crack house when we first came, but my wife liked the size, liked the location right in Waikiki, so we can walk to the hotels for the weddings and all that. And so we started the process of selling the house. In August, we closed and got 410,000, which meant after paying the mortgage, we got 130,000 left. From that money, which was tax-free because we've been living in the house for more than two years, we used 75,000 to buy this condo. We spent 10,000 to fix it. I fixed it myself. It's not the greatest, but it's, it's all right. And then the remaining 45,000, we paid all debt. We moved into the house in November, which meant we went from paying 1,600 a month to 1,000, which doesn't seem like a lot, but remember now we cut 30 minutes from our commute. We technically only really need one car, especially because we don't have parking, we have to park somewhere else. But uh, everything kind of started working out. So once we moved in and we were nice and comfortable, a couple of things happened. So first, even though we bought this place for 75,000 and spent 10,000 on fixing it, it was actually listed on Zillow for about 125,000. And there's been times where it jumps up to as much as 220,000. 
Obviously that's Zillow, so it's not very accurate, but uh, the point being that it's worth more than what we paid for and what we invested into it. Not to mention that we're legally allowed to Airbnb it. So when we go on vacation for a month, like in Australia, then we actually end up making money because we only pay a thousand dollars in fees. And if we rent it for the month, that's potentially three, four thousand dollars that we can make from it. And the other thing that happened is we started investing again. So I started putting a hundred dollars a week on Acorns, a hundred dollars a week on Stash, a hundred dollars a week on Robin Hood, plus four hundred to my wife's IRA to kind of match what I get from the military uh, to my 401k. Three hundred a month for each of my daughter's college fund, so that's six hundred right there. And even as I'm telling you guys right now, I can't believe how much money I've been able to invest, and it's all really due to making decisions where we end up minimalizing, where we limit our spending. So there was a lot of those downsizing decisions that have helped us uh, be able to invest that much each month. So even when you see the middle of uh, this year, we were up at somewhere around almost $20,000. That was all credit cards that was paying off for the uh, trip in Australia, the trip in Mexico, the trip in Japan. We already had a plan on how we we're gonna pay it off because of the busy seasons that we had in June and now September, October, November. And so because of those, we've been able to pay off that credit card debt and prepare for the next trips, which is gonna be California during winter, Taiwan in March, and hopefully Canada next summer. Before I end this video, I wanna show you guys where our money's invested right now. Now these numbers are approximate. They're pretty close to the actual number, except the value of this condo, because I don't really need to get it appraised and we're not gonna sell it anytime soon. So these are the numbers. We got about 10,000 cash. And that kind of varies throughout the month when we're paying bills, when we're getting checks, but somewhere around 10,000. And we try not to keep more than that. If at any point we have more than that, we, I just dump it in one of the investing accounts. We got about 10,000 in Acorns. We also have about 10,000 in uh, Stash. I keep those the same. I just wanna see which one performs better. Acorns that I have zero control over, I pretty much just dictate how aggressive I want them to invest the money or Stash, which uh, I choose the industries that I invest in. And so right now, Acorns is beating Stash by about $200, but it's not a huge difference. Disa's college fund has about 13,500. Dia's college fund has about 19,000. We got about $20,000 worth of gear between the two of us. Megu's IRA is at about 21,500. We have three cars that are estimated at about 25,000 for all three of them. We currently have about 30,000 in Robinhood. My 401k has about 45,000 in it. And the condo right now, according to Zillow, is at about 127,000. So that's the total of about approximately 331,000. Now keep in mind that some of these accounts are more liquid than others. For example, the college funds, the IRAs, and the 401ks, those I pretty much can't touch unless I wanna get penalized and basically lose whatever gains we had due to penalties. So those are all the questions for emergency type situations. The cash fluctuates. There's times where we only have about $1,000 cash and there's times where we have more than 10,000, but it fluctuates a lot just because the cost of living in Hawaii is so high that there's a lot of bill paying going on. Acorns and Stash are probably the most liquid because all I have to do is just input a number that I want, hit withdraw. But even then when I invest, the mentality of it is not to have to touch that money indefinitely. And so that when we actually hit retirement, hopefully there's enough money in there that we live from the dividends without having to touch the actual money that's in there. Obviously the gear is less liquid because some of the equipment we bought new, some of it we bought used, so really their value is gonna fluctuate. But that's it, I plan to put a PDF on my Patreon account. Uh, I decided to start putting more information up there just because I haven't really been paying attention to it. Let me know on the comment section below if you have any questions. I wanna do a Q&A so I can test out the live feature here on YouTube, just so I can do at least one live video. So if that sounds interesting to you, let me know. Uh, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel and make sure you hit that bell so you get notified anytime that I upload new videos. I really appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye.